you're a guy that strikes me as you're not afraid of anything, but you know that there's power in what you say. Do you care that certain people will try to spin the narrative that because you don't support Kamala Harris or because you feel this certain way about her policies, her answers that you don't like black women? <laughs> well, I don't give a shit. Hey, welcome back to the channel. It's your man Wise. And we got to check out a couple of clips from the RG3 podcast. I think it's called Out of Pocket. But Dana White showed up and sat down with those guys and he had a lot to say. So we got to get into this, man. Like, share, subscribe to the channel. Drop me a comment if you haven't done so already. Uh, consider joining the ARP family, man. It supports the team. I appreciate everybody that has joined the ARP family thus far. And without further ado, let's go. The guy that strikes me as you're not afraid of anything. But you know that there's power in what you say. Do you care that certain people will try to spin the narrative that because you don't support Kamala Harris or because you feel this certain way about her policies, her answers that you don't like black women? <laughs> well, I don't give a shit. Anybody that really knows me knows who I am. See, that's the thing is it's, it's like there are going to be people you're going to be judged. And, and I've done some dumb shit in my life and, and things that I will be judged on. And I should be. I should be judged on it. Um, but the people who really know me, I have a really small core group of people that know who I am. And that's all I give a shit about. If you aren't close to me and you don't know me, I don't could give a shit what you think of me. It doesn't matter to me. I could care less. I think it's a... Uh, it's a healthy way to live your life. It's a healthy way to live your life because far too many people care too much about what other people think. I as agree. A, as opposed to really focusing on the people that are around them and that, and that truly matter in the grand scheme That's of it, it all. Because I know in Dana White's life, uh, family, wife, kids, they're the focal point and then the business. And my employees. I and mean, when you think about, this is where I come and I, I spend most of my time here every day. And I have a team here that... We, we have each other's backs and we, you know, we, uh, I love what I do and I love who I do it with every day. And the people who know me, know me. And the people who don't, I could give a shit. Mm, mm. The left in their divisive rhetoric. Think about this. You don't support the civic political or, or candidate out there. Right. And because you don't support that individual, you will automatically, if it's a woman, you are misogynist. If it's someone that is, you know, black or something along those lines, Hispanic or whatever the case may be, you are racist. If you are a black person, black man, black woman that won't support a specific candidate, especially if they're not on the uh, liberal left democratic side of things, you are all of a sudden, you know, a traitor to your race. Uh, you are, you know, maybe a coon or uncle Tom or, you know, whatever. I mean, it's just so ridiculous. Last time I checked, we live in the United States of America. Last time I checked, people fought and died for the opportunities that we have in this country. The vote that we all have in this country, it's your vote. It's your choice. It's your voice. It's your opportunity to voice your opinion about the direction that you would like to see this country go in. And the fact that you have people out here that will say, oh, because you don't support a Kamala Harris, you don't like women, uh, you don't like black people, you, 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 you're a traitor, so forth and so on. I just think it is ridiculous. But that is par for the court for the left. That's who they are. Because if they can't shame you into voting for them, if they can't use fear tactics into voting for them, you know, if they can't paint some narrative about you, you know, in a negative way to get you to vote for them, they really don't have a whole lot to stand on because their policies aren't good. Let's just keep it real. Let's keep going. Basically, the Democratic Party controls all the media. They control all the media. Why do you say that? Other than Fox. Yeah. I, I mean, because if you don't <laughs> if you don't watch Fox, Donald Trump is the devil, right? He's the worst mm. thing ever yes. to ever happen to the United States. And they keep talking about if he gets in, you know what's gonna happen? Well, he was already in. He's already been the president, so it's not like right. you, 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 we don't know what's gonna happen. The country was in a really good place when he was the president. You're talking about change, change from what? The last four years? And, and when you look at Biden, right, we all know where Biden's at. Biden, they, they even came out and said he's on. Who's running the country right now? 
It's not him. It's not her. Who's running the country? I don't know the answer to that question, but I'll tell you what's brilliant. Whoever's running the country pulled off this Kamala Harris thing so that they can stay in power and run the country for another four years. It's not Kamala Harris, and it's definitely not Joe Biden. Mm. Well, he said that we all know where Biden is. I don't think we do. When's the last time Biden, you know, really sat down and spoke to the American people and wasn't actually campaigning for Kamala Harris? Don't worry. I'll wait. I mean, we hadn't seen a whole lot from this guy since he decided through a letter that he was going to step down and no longer run for president. And then we hadn't heard a whole lot from him. That's just true. And the thing is, when he says that, oh, the Democrats basically run the mainstream media, he's pretty right. There was a Pew Research from like 2020 that revealed that 52 percent of journalists um, identified as being left leaning, while only 8 percent identified as being to the right. And there was a lot of people, I guess, that either, you know, des decline to, you know, choose a side or whatever the case may be. But what we do know is, is that when you look at the tone, the emphasis, the uh, editorial choices that are made by newsrooms, they tend to be biased towards to the left. That's just a fact. And when you look at the majority of platforms out there and you look at, you know, even the platform that RG3, you know, was, you know, released or let go from, you know, ESPN, it is supposed to be a sports network, but it is super liberal and uber woke. You know it. I know it. When you see news coverage on certain issues like healthcare, immigration, race relations, uh, the alphabet community rights. Those are all things that align with the Democratic positions. And for whatever reason, it seems like a large majority of your platforms out there, they align with the position that the Democratic Party holds or stands on. So Dana's not wrong. And we're not crazy for thinking that, hey, CNN, MSNBC, um, uh, the New York Times, New York Post, all these different outlets out here, ESPN, I mean, outside of Fox, on a, on a mainstream level, and now you're starting to see, you know, Newsmax and some other places, uh, or News Nation and, and a few other platforms that are continuing to grow that are a little more right-leaning, but where are the center-leaning? How about we just, how about we get a news network, just a large news network, a big one, that gives us the facts and allows us to make a decision on what, you know, what we think about, you know, whatever the facts are. Don't lean it one way or another. You know, be even. Report things evenly. That's just not something that is happening right now in the United States of America. And a lot of that kicked off or started, uh, you know, from Obama. And I believe it was like the Sumter, you know, something I can't think of it off the top of my head. And I don't have it in front of me right now. But there was an act that Obama, you know, basically, you know, I think got rid of that allowed for news networks to push propaganda. I mean, I didn't make it up. You're very self-aware, man. And you you support uh, Donald Trump because he supports you, but I'm sure you also... Well, he and I have become really good friends. Right. Really good friends. Why do you think, why do you think people have been trying to kill him? Man, this whole thing is so crazy. The, the narrative that has been flipped on Donald Trump is one of the craziest things that I've ever seen, yet at the same time, brilliant and, and like a masterpiece in what they've done to this guy. Um, first of all, uh, he's a racist, right? They say he's a racist. They say that, yeah. Show me one video, one ounce of proof where he has ever acted like a racist. And one of There's no proof. We're talking about Donald Trump here. This dude has been in the public eye since the 80s. I remember people talking about Donald Trump in the 80s, you know, when he owned the USFL team because I played football and I was big into football back then. I still am. But and if that if he is a racist, we're all the people coming out the woodworks talking about all the racist things that he did to him. Where are those people? Every time they mention Donald Trump and, and racist, they talk about a lawsuit that was settled in the 70s that, if I'm not mistaken, he never admitted fault. I think it was he settled it just to not string this thing along. And, you know, when you start talking about courts and lawsuits, man, they can burn up a lot of money with lawyers. So it's probably cheaper to settle than to try to drag and beat a case. And because the thing is, is that in a situation like that, it's really a no win situation, because even if you take this thing to trial and you win, how much money did you come out? How much time was lost, you know, by fighting this? 
So the easier thing to do at the time, I'm for sure, his lawyer told him, like, hey, bro, let's settle and, and just move on. And then the Central Park Five situation. But nobody ever talks about the fact that the governor in New York was Democrat. The mayor, if I'm not mistaken, Democrat. The prosecutor, the DA, Democrat in uh, Feinstein. I mean, I would assume that majority of those police officers that coerced those young dudes into, you know, giving a false statement of admitting guilt, probably Democrats, I'm just making an assumption based on what we know about New York City. I mean, come on, man. And everybody during that time frame thought that those guys were guilty because they admitted guilt. Those are the things that they use to say, oh, he's racist. I mean, it just doesn't make sense. One of the things that he's said to me, he said, let me tell you what. I've been in the hotel business my whole life. And in the hotel business, people from all over the world work for you. Never been called a racist until I became a Republican and ran for president. Right? I mean, and, and you talk to anybody of any race or color that knows him and has known him for years, they love him. I mean, there's a clip of Mike Tyson. There's a clip of Mike Tyson uh, where he says, uh, yeah, I'm voting for Donald Trump. What are you going to do about it? I'm just going to keep my opinions to myself. But anyway, I'm, I'm voting for Trump. So what somebody's going to do about it? I don't think anybody. I mean, I'm going to disagree with you. Oh, yeah, but I'm just talking about so what? Yeah, does it make you feel weird that no, people... No, so what? Do people... Why is it... He's on a podcast with, with, with some dudes and right. they're like, what are you going to do about it? He's like, well, I'll disagree with you. He's like, okay, so what? What are you going to do? And then he's talking about Donald Trump. He's like, yeah, you, you'll vote for Donald Trump because he's made you a lot of money. He's like, <laughs> no, I made him a lot of money. Mike said, <laughs> right? Right. That's, yeah. a, that's, a, that's an interesting way to look and, at it. And you could, you, you could interview tons of people, um, you know, without getting overly political. When you look at the guy, right, um, think about growing up. Both of you probably have known people that have grown up in wealthy families, right? Yeah. And the families are usually a shit show. It's a total mess. The kids are on drugs or fucked yeah. up or they hate their parents True. and all this stuff. Look at Donald Trump's family. The kids adore him. They're all really nice people. I mean, Ivanka Trump is one of the nicest people that you will ever meet. And her husband, Jared Kushner, is, couldn't be any classier. Really, really good human beings, and, and, and as is the rest of the family. Um, but the narrative that has been flipped on this guy has been unbelievable. And I truly believe when you talk about the attempts on his life, I think when you are, when you are far left, it's a little nutty. There's some... Nutty far rights, too. But the far lefts are, they're out there. Yeah. Where yeah. I sit, everybody thinks I'm some kind of hardcore Republican. I'm right down the middle. I'm for common sense. There are a lot of things about me that, that, that are, that are uh, you know, I would consider liberal. And there's a lot of things about me that I would consider conservative. But I'm all about common sense. Right. And I don't judge people by their politics. I judge people whether, you know, are you a douchebag? <laughs> okay. Right, right. If you're a douchebag, I probably don't like you. Yeah. yeah. You if said, you're a Democrat, I could give a shit yeah. who you vote for. That's the other thing that I don't like. I don't like people who judge people by who they vote for. Mm. This is America. You vote can vote for whoever the hell for, you want to. Vote for you want. Right. And and or your religious beliefs or your whatever. I don't care about any of that stuff. Right. Are you a good person or are you not a good person? Mm. And I can tell you this fr from from 20 years of experience. Donald Trump is a good person. I would never back a guy who was a racist or a piece of shit or somebody that wanted to start World War III. Kudos to Dana White, man, for, you know, just standing on his square, man. He and Donald Trump, they have a real relationship, obviously, and no different than Mike Tyson and, you know, his feelings about Trump. He's not letting any of this sway that. And he's absolutely right, man. I mean, when it comes to, you know, Trump's family and you talk about his kids and, you know, you talk about the grandkids. And if I'm not mistaken, I think he's a great grandfather as well. If I'm not mistaken, I could be wrong on that. But you don't hear any salacious things in the tabloids about the Trump family. You just don't. None of his children. You just don't. Nowhere near like what we hear you know, in reference to, you know, Biden's family, for sure. I just find it peculiar that you have so many people that have decided that they are just going to go along to get along. You can see the sheep. You can see the people that don't think for themselves. You can see the people that will say and do anything for a check. You can see it. You can see how disingenuous a lot of this stuff is from a lot of these folks like an RG3, like a Charlemagne the Fried. 
a lot of these people, man, they're disingenuous. Either they are afraid to tell you what they really feel for, you know, fear of being canceled and, you know, being ostracized by people that are left leaning in that, in that media world. Or two, <laughs> they really believe this stuff. They don't care about the future of this country or the future, you know, that their kids could have in this country. For the life of me, I don't know. But I want to hear from you guys, man. Let me know what you think in the comment section, man. Like, share, subscribe, join the ARP family. Appreciate everybody that has thus far. Keep God first in your life. Stay prayed up and we'll catch up with you all next time. Peace.